Welcome back. We are speaking with Congresswoman Frederica Wilson, and let's bring it on home, Congresswoman. There, it, welcome to hurricane season day two, mm -hmm. and um, and this week we've learned that two thirds of uh, the state's nursing homes, licensed nursing nursing homes, do not have backup generators, even though there has been a law to get those since twelve people died in a Hollywood nursing home two years ago. You have in front of you a book that you issued this week uh, for mm -hmm. safe seniors. Right. Well, I mean that—that's it's staggering, may I say, that, Here's the that book. so many nursing homes are not complying with this what's meant to be a life-saving law. And what are the consequences for that? Are, are there any? There are consequences that the uh, there's a liability, uh, and there are consequences uh, that our governor uh, Scott put in place for the bill, and they can the licenses can be revoked. They can be closed down, and they can be fined. And if something happens to one of the patients, like what happened in uh, at Hollywood Hills, of course there will be civil penalties because they can be sued. So what we're trying to do, in which I keep up with emergency management for the three counties, our counties are not, our three counties are not that bad. Uh, those are statewide statistics. But we are working with the nursing homes to find funding. Their grant, there's grant money in federal grant money, state grant money that they can get and procure if they want to do yeah. that. It's just a, it's a will. Do you know whether any penalties or consequences have been levied yet? Is, do you, I'm not sure that you would no, know I would, that sitting I don't here know. at the table. I don't know yet, and I don't know if there's a specific deadline as to when they should have it. But well, they, I they, think they, the they deadline, can ask for, they, people ask right. for waivers. Yeah. So all of the ones that you're talking about, they're on a waiver. Right, well, they're Some 240. Some of them are on a second waiver. Excuse me, 247 <laughs> licensed nursing homes in Florida have asked for a waiver. There's 685 altogether. So, I mean, this is a huge number. Maybe there are not so many in South Florida, but we're talking no. also about uh, ALFs and other facilities mm -hmm. where there are vulnerable people. Well, we're talking about ALFs. We're talking about uh, nursing homes. We're talking about hospitals. We have, we've also worked very closely with uh, emergency management and with Florida Power and Light to put to move them to more of a priority list mm -hmm. so that they can restore the power earlier than uh, before. This was not just a consortium to go after nursing homes to punish them, to make them um, get a, a generator, but it was a, a, a whole group where we divided our community up. We had a group of firefighters who came back up with a report mm -hmm. telling us what should happen, what the temperature should be, all of that is in here. In this book, it has all of the gas stations in the three tri-county area that With you can generators call, to get generators gasoline. where you can buy them, everything. Right. All We had a mental health issue. We had a dialysis issue. Right. There were many things that happened. There, there are many things that happened during hurricanes for people who are vulnerable. So this is what this is, a preventive tool and a preventive measure. And we how might, do people get this? How, how well, do you we get have, a copy of this? Well, you go online to my, uh, my office. There's a, uh, you can download it, and we also have hard copies that we have distributed to the actual facilities. Yeah. However, for citizens in the community, you can go online to uh, Congresswoman Wilson's uh, email and um, Representative website Fred and Rico get it. Wilson, mm -hmm. yeah. And well, the savvy seniors who are online and on the internet. No, not the seniors. <laughs> this is not for seniors now. This yeah. is for the actual owners. Yeah. This is for yeah. the firefighters, everyone that's involved in keeping us safe. Yeah. This is, this is, we vowed never, ever again will we allow this to happen. And uh, I personally put into legislation in Congress money for nursing homes and for training in the transportation bill so that um, these nursing home workers will know how to answer the phone in an emergency. Did you hear mm. the 911 call? Yes. Yeah. The 911 call didn't even suggest urgency. No, it and did not. for the firefighters, you go to the nursing home once for one 
lady that's dead? What about the other ladies? You feel the heat. This book will save lives. Congresswoman, before, oh. Yeah. I, I, I saw the hand. Go no, ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> Glenna, go ahead, my dear. Um, you know, I'm, I'm guessing we're probably going to go in the same direction. You're, you're so involved with the family of Sergeant LaDavid Johnson. Exactly. In memori this Memorial Day, he was remembered again. The, uh, the sergeant, along with three others, who was killed in a ambush, really, in Niger mm -hmm. in October of 2017. And this is that young man from Miami Gardens. And the, the Department of Defense has issued a report on what happened that day. But you've been so involved and have so many questions. And Congresswoman, why are you skeptical that we're not hearing the real story? What do you think the story is here? Well, when Father, uh, Sergeant LaDavid Johnson's family was first approached, they said that he was captured. And I believe that to this day. I believe that. Mm. And no one has proven to me that he was not captured. Instead of and escaping instead and of, shot yeah, on the, the run. The re whatever that report says. Yeah. Separated several, from his yeah, unit and there killed. There several of them that mm -hmm. he ran. That was the last yeah. one. Yeah. That he ran so fast. <laughs> that he got away. He, oh my goodness, it's just been crazy. So I've had so many uh, confidential briefings and briefings alone, and uh, I am looking for a video, a video that I've gone so far as to Southcom to try to view, and they promised me that they would let me see it. It's a video that was made by drones after the firefight. The drones landed according to a press conference, and they announced that the drones landed and took pictures of the post firefight, which would have included Sergeant David Johnson and the other soldiers who were killed. And you would have, have seen, not the video. seen that video. Yeah. You know, before we run out of time, I, I simply, we cannot sort of let this end without asking you to weigh in on presidential politics. 23 Democrats are running. It's a cast of thousands. And they're going to be at the Arts Center here uh, June 26th and 27th. Is there one or are there a couple of candidates who you really like, who sort of get your heart beating, who you think <laughs> could beat Donald Trump? I think that all of them can beat Donald Trump. I really, really feel that way because when we finish with Donald Trump, Donald Trump will be hung out to dry because he is a cheat and he's cheating on his income taxes. He has not paid income taxes in 10 years. He doesn't want anyone to see his taxes because I truly believe this is where we're going to get him in this whole impeachment process. We're going to get him just like we got Al Capone. Oh, on that's, that was fighting taxes. words. Whoa. Fighting words. You got it. Well, and so any one of them will beat him. Boy, what a great point in which to end. A very good uh, conversation, uh, Frederica Wilson. Great to have you come Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you pleasure. very much. Up next, we take it all to the roundtable. Stay tuned. <laughs>